Are you testing or is it starting? It's it's been going for a half an hour. Oh, maybe start back and let us. We'll, oh, we'll officially come on. start. Who cares, man? What does it matter? <laughs> it's just we a movie. Introduce ourselves. Okay. Oh, who are you? I'm Orson Welles. My name is Jim Carrey. And I'm Ben Stiller. I'm Judd Apatow. Is that I've how you pronounce it? I've always that? said Apatow. <laughs> Me I've, I, too. I've changed it. I've changed it just lately. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to get fancier. Wow, that's amazing. I remember the Apato was <laughs> yeah, popular Apato back in the day. Was good, yeah. Well, okay, I, this is already going. This is happening. So I guess what we should talk about a little bit is how it started. Yeah. Um, there was a script, The Cable Guy, and uh, I... Uh, I I knew that you were doing it, Jim. Yeah, yeah. And I, I desperately And thought, you jumped on board and r- rode my coattails all the way to the top. Yes, and here I am, looking down, <laughs> Judd Apatow. Looking down at and me I grabbed now. onto your coattails. <laughs> it was a coattail train. And I'm looking for the coat rack right now. <laughs> but you did. You called me up, Judd, I remember, and, uh, and offered me an opportunity. I made a very brief play to direct myself, which... Got rejected by the Sony people in about 15 <laughs> minutes. Really? <laughs> I did, and then uh, then it was like, well, who else? And there was this list. I'm like, Judd Stil- Apatow Stiller? will never direct a movie. <laughs> yeah. As long as Dream on, man. buddy. <laughs> Dream on. And Jack Black, the great Jack Black, is in this movie. With very long amazing? hair. Incredible. But, you know, every time he's on screen, he's really interesting. Yeah, we had all, it's just amazing. The, the Look group. how buff he is. <laughs> I mean, Matthew is really buff here. Where's the cable guy? This was, um, yeah, this was, uh, I don't know, what, what, what should we talk about? Well, I, I, mean, wanna, I don't want to talk about the set. Well, we could talk yeah. about um, that we all, me and Ben went and visited Jim when he was shooting Ace Ventura, Ventura 2 to discuss what to do with this. Yeah. And, and Jim had very specific... Uh, See, look how interesting he is there. Lisping ideas. I remember That's you right. wanted to do the lisp. I wanted to do the lisp because, you know, the more money people pay me the more i want to rebel and do <laughs> retarded things i'm sorry yeah i, I remember we went to we went to rebel uh, we went to savannah what was it savannah no no it was uh it was, uh, it was charleston. south carolina south charleston carolina. yeah yeah i remember you were shooting a scene from mace Ventura where you were i think was it the scene where you're coming out of the of the rhino's butt yeah. but yeah <laughs> that's right yeah i was coming um, out of the rhino's butt and, and it was hot out it was like 105 out yeah, people were dying. People were falling apart, and then, and the the producers were asking them to drink less water. And we <laughs> couldn't afford the water. <laughs> couldn't afford the water. And we spent yeah a couple of days just sort of uh, brainstorming. I have a, I have those right. notes still, like from that hotel, really? uh, and it just says like push tit against glass. <laughs> oh, Stephen. I know. <laughs> That's right, but you know that's one of the most sublime scenes ever, I think, in a movie. Oh my gosh! And then that so, I got to do that. And then you, uh, and then you sort of rewrote the script, basically. Uh, I went and uh, and rewrote uh, the draft. You cut uh, your teeth. Uh, Lee, Lou Holtz was is the credited writer uh, on this film. I did a, a pass on it. Yeah. I think if I say more than that, I get kicked out of the writers' guild. Exactly. You can never show up again. <laughs> Yeah, look at all the people in this. There were a lot of people attached. Wow. They were incredibly yeah. involved. And, and 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 that moment in time. There's a great Lou Holtz right there, Junior. It, it was uh, post Ace Ventura two. Mm-hmm. There was a white hot Jim Carrey madness. Yeah. At that moment. And I was just about to destroy the industry, as we know it. <laughs> so, I, oh, yes, I forget. So Jim was paid... Uh, $20 million for 20, this part. $20 million. What did you do with that $20 million? Uh, I'm still living off that actual $20 million. <laughs> and they made a big deal of it. They, the, the studio announced it, I remember. They were like, yeah. very excited about the announcement. Which yeah, they stuck think, their heads right out there <laughs> into the guillotine. It really just put us out there from the beginning. It sure really did expose right. us, doesn't let's, it? Let's get our money's worth. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, we'll be real happy for them. We're rooting for them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they said $40 million budget, $20 million to Jim. And then if we ever ask for any more than $40 million, they they were very angry. At, hey, I don't know what they're complaining about, man. At the end of the day, what do I take home? Seven? <laughs> 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 Publicists, I mean, seriously. lawyers, Everybody. agents, managers, oh gosh. the Taxes. U.S. government. Yeah. Hold on, I'm caught up in this now. 
So, uh, <laughs> oh, man, I'm really good at this. At this moment in time, when I was uh, doing my uh, work, I, I was very, very lonely. I was in a very lonely place. So this, the idea of the desperation of this was not a big leap for how I was feeling <laughs> no. at the time. Yeah, and I was no. coming off of a big breakup, too. Yes. And we're we were all, both, yeah. We're all disenfranchised. <laughs> it's all about abandonment, man. Every role I do is about abandonment. How about you guys? My life is about abandonment. <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, uh, here I we go. Here we go. This <laughs> is a this is an interesting little choice here that I <laughs> wanted to inject in the film. It was a kind of a tribute to sexuality. Mm -hmm. And here, right here, <laughs> is when I found the spot. <laughs> the entire set shuddered when I did this take. I also remember about every aspect of this, we could not have laughed or enjoyed the shooting and the ideas of this more. But then when you see it years later, you do think, that is completely crazy that we're opening the movie with you fingering the wall. <laughs> it's absolutely For sure. unacceptable. I, mean, I think a lot of, of the issues with the movie are about the context of the movie because it was being made as sort of this mainstream summer, uh, you know, hopefully comedic blockbuster type movie and really we were making this sort of strange sort of dark <laughs> pseudo-sexual <laughs> tale of two men who yeah. become obsessed with each other. Somewhat with homosexual overtones. This is the first bromance. It truly um, is. It truly is. But I, I thought it was important. I really do. I still think it's important. I think this movie is 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 what's wrong with everything. <laughs> this show you what, what you're allowed to do when you're at a moment in time where people... Because yeah, I don't think the studio ever... They were sort of afraid to question what was going on. Well, I don't think you okay. should. I mean, look at... I mean, it's a good... I think this is a great movie, man. But if it come out like, a, you know, what, Halloween or something, or yeah. if it come out, you know, it hadn't been sort of put out there as Well, a, yeah, they tried to... You, they the I remember kids. they took all the psycho kind of drama craziness out of the first trailer, and I got worried right then. I went, uh-oh. They're yeah. trying to mask this thing. They're trying to put it out there as some kind of friendly little... Number. The trailer is a little ridiculous. The trailer, in terms of the music on the trailer, it was like um pa pa music. Yeah. We wanted the yeah. trailer to be like a Cape Fear trailer. I wanted me like uh, attempting to drill uh, my drill into Matthew's head or something like that, <laughs> and I wanted it. I wanted to just be out there. And actually, when I was looking at all this stuff that we cut this out of the is, movie, this is really weird now. Looking back on you and everything that's happened in your life now, watching how this part, as, how, how it sort of paralyzed. mirrors, yeah, yeah I know. totally <laughs> freaky. The people you've the killed, happens. yeah, and yeah. My, my twin who's no longer here. Because mm -hmm. it was right after the O.J. Simpson trial, because that was happening when we were in prep, and yeah. the Menendez trial, which I was obsessed with. I didn't miss a second of the Menendez really? trial. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Wor I wasn't fun. working a lot at that time. <laughs> I was like, I believe him. <laughs> but, but, I, but I feel though, I feel that we kind of just uh, sort of had a chance to do whatever we wanted to do. I think this was the day that Tony Robbins showed up on the set. Remember the day Tony Robbins showed up and he gave me a picture of Jimmy Stewart signed? He had like done some research on me and knew that I loved Jimmy Stewart. And it was my birthday. This is my birthday. Really? On the set. This day was my birthday. I just remember when we were with Tony Robbins and we were all in a golf cart going to have lunch with Tony Robbins and Ben and I had done a parody of him for the Ben Stiller show and we loved yeah. him. And his and legs were dragging on the ground. <laughs> and some guy yelled, uh, hey. Caught under the wheels and stuff. A guy yelled, we, I just borrowed your tapes from my friend. And Tony Robbins said, don't borrow them, pay for them. <laughs> yeah. This is one of my favorite uh, This line actually film. right here is kind of kind of sweet cable. let's just watch it now with the audio uh, <laughs> wait let's do foley for it <laughs> thunder you do the rain i'll do the thunder <laughs> we spend a lot of time trying to figure out words that would lisp and i remember your uh, manager eric gold said john seriously he can't do the lisp you can't let him do the lisp <laughs> well that word was a tar hard one to get around i loved it i loved it, it i also i also word. remember bernie brillstein mm -hmm. uh we sent him some footage and uh 
and he was how's like, how's he doing by the way <laughs> not well oh. uh, yeah, he didn't i remember in his book he talked about this as being a, a huge fiasco i believe <laughs> he said or disaster or fiasco i didn't or read that really <laughs> well he said to me oh, he's so like it, it really reminds me of neighbors and I'm like, yeah, we love neighbors. We love We're trying neighbors. To, and he's like, no, we don't like neighbors. Oh, neighbors. You know, they, I hate that when, in retrospect, they, they, they make their decisions based on how well a film did. I mean, like being there. You know what I mean? Right. If you say being there to an executive at a studio, they go like, oh, no. We wouldn't yeah. want being there to happen again. Right. <laughs> Harold and Maude? Pshaw. But I mean, you did say, you said that like we were just having, it was really fun. The whole experience, I remember, it was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Up until I remember the, the day that it the came last, out. The, <laughs> 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 I remember at the at the premiere. I literally at the premiere. Someone handed me two faxes, which was the Time yeah. Review and the Newsweek Review, oh my and they God. were both bad. <laughs> and I went, "Oh my God, what's happening?" Oh, I, I knew. I knew. I mean, I, I I knew that we were in trouble for sure, financially, whatever it was, you know, was going on within the business. But, uh, you know, they were, they were just the wolves were at the door at that point. Right. But I knew that we were doing something that was really interesting, that in retrospect, we were going to look back and kind of dig it. Well, I mean, I, I know that you never, ever had any question about the direction of where you wanted it to go. No, no. David Cross on the left there. I blame you. I would for take it failure. further. I would take it further. <laughs> I would. Um, no, actually, Matthew would have been killed but, in the first scene. But you know what? Honestly, though, in looking at the stuff that we cut out, I actually now. I actually would have, for sure, just felt feel like we should have just kept it all in further. Yeah, for yes. sure, just yeah. gone totally Redux. with what it was. Redux. <laughs> and that's the great Harry O'Reilly there. Who, that's right. Who we love. My buddy and, Harry. and we force him to shave some of his head and get these fake plugs put in. That's right. <laughs> and there oh, he is. Oh, look, he is. There he is. There he is. Here's the man. The guy has an empire, though. Seriously. It's still going. He has an island where he keeps people. He keeps people there. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't leave until they get to a certain level. He grows level. people there. He does. He grows human beings. <laughs> but he at, grows at, motivation. But at the time, it felt like it was a uh, throwing down of the gauntlet that you were going to do different things yeah. other than big, broad comedy. It was It was a rebellion. It's, it's been a complete rebellion against it, all the way along against expectation. As if this kind of set up people to know that things like The Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine were coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this one was the first time they were like, oh, my God, he's this is not what yeah. the others are like. Well, how they speak about it still is so strange to me, the way they speak about it. Like, when they do a retrospect or whatever, it's, it's like, uh, and then... He gave the audience something they were not ready for, you know, kind of thing. And it's just like it, it, they talk about it as if it was like a murderously dark thing. And I think it's just funny. Right. Yes. And the need of the character is hilarious, you know, to, but to me, but that's, you know, it's but like when you're... our sensibilities. It's right. like you and me, the evil brothers are like, <laughs> we love to go to that place. Where... Were you thinking that at all, though, when we were doing it? I mean, what in yeah. terms of how an audience was going to. React to it? Uh, no, I al all? I always follow my uh, what what I think is funny, what I and the, the people I grew up with would think is funny while we're smoking right. a joint in the kitchen. <laughs> but I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't. Well, I, there's something amazing about this sequence, which is this is the big uh, scene where you describe the future of technology. Yeah. And everything you say here came true, by the everything way. Everything is true. You can play video games with a friend in Vietnam. No, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm addicted to Twitter. I'm completely out of my mind over the whole technology. That, that's right. You're right. Yeah. But also, all that's, of this, when you get in the dish, is looped. And, and Jim, when he was looping, is the greatest looper where you have to replace your voice beep, when the sound's beep, bad. Beep, beep. And I, I just remember when you were doing it, you could go like 40 seconds of talking in sync and have it all sync. Which like is it. one of the hardest things to do, yeah. technically, in show business. Yeah, and what that's I, actually the bowl that I ate cereal out of every morning. 
that's what, an interesting what's insane fact to me about is the movie. We actually built that satellite dish. I mean, nowadays you probably would never build it because you could right. just CG it. But yeah. we built then, that thing on, a, on top of a mountain, Santa Clarita. An yeah, actual... and then and then Contact used it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they needed a satellite dish. And back then, all effect shots were so expensive. So this is a... kind of like Eternal Sunshine right here. Mm. A little Eternal Sunshine for uh, foreskin. Or what's the four on that for... one? Forebearer. Forebearer, yeah. yeah. Foreshadowing. Right. Foreshadow. Now, there was a movie that we liked a lot. There were a few movies we watched when we were working on the script. One was that great movie with Rob Lowe and James Spader. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Bad we're, Influence. Bad Influence. Oh, Bad Influence and then, was great. And then yeah. there was that Kurt Russell movie. Yes, uh, with, uh, about the, the bad cop with Ray Liotta, right? Yes. And, uh, yeah. Oh. What was that called? Like, Oh, shoot. But we watched that a, a lot of times, and we're yeah. one bad cop or something. We're really <laughs> <laughs> amused by that. And then one. single white female. Right? Yes, and yeah, hand that yeah. rocks the there cradle. There was a few of those, yeah, at the time. But I really think that this was the this was the pivotal one. This is what stopped them from ever happening. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and I also remember that you told me when you were doing the the part that one of the key things you did was whenever you. Looked at another actor. You didn't look them in the eye. You would look them in the forehead. forehead. Right. In the forehead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did that a lot. The yeah. dead eye stare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just unnerves you a tiny bit. Just can't quite get your well, footing. I think the character though is just such a so so funny. To I me love him because he's just so needy and he's so it's he so just wants a friend. Yeah. I mean he's he has a very clear motivation that's uh, pure. Yeah. It's very pure. And we all lo and we all loved uh, Matthew. Every once in a while, the, the the dialogue breaks through, and I just I just have to giggle. It's ridiculous. It was so exciting having Matthew around. Yeah. And I remember at the time we did it, it felt like the first movie where Matthew played an adult male. He had hair on his balls. Yes. It, I'm sorry. In his first that? film with that. Is that acceptable? You learned that in your <laughs> research? Oh, or? I'll just I'll do it clean. <laughs> he had hair in his armpits. Finally, <laughs> finally, he had hair in his armpits, and he was ready to do a male. Well, it was like a lead. very natural relationship though between you guys in yeah. terms of his reaction to you. You know, it really worked. I remember really him saying worked. to me one day, "I'm running out of ways to seem shocked by the cable guy." <laughs> <laughs> well, Matthew has the driest sense of humor of all time, so. It, I ran into him while he was doing the producers on Broadway, and he looked like he wanted to hang himself. <laughs> it was like a year and a half. In. <laughs> I'm doing the same. Doing the Mel Brooks joke. jokes. <laughs> Here's a good look. Here's a good look coming up when you do the um, uh -huh. the weird smile. This is nice. Um, but my friends call me Chip. And we'd average about I don't know how many. Here, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was real slow motion or probably just Jim Carrey slow motion. <laughs> yeah, I think that was me. Which is yeah, one of the scenes me. one of the scenes we cut out where you do the fake slow motion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The good fella slow motion. Right. Click. I don't listen to you. It's good. I pretend to understand. I remember that coffee shop in Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we should talk Owen about Owen is uh, good in this movie too, by the way. Yes. And that's and my How about Leslie Mann? That's how about the great talk Leslie a little Mann? Bit. How about that? Talk a little bit about how you guys yeah. met. Leslie movie. came in to read for the movie. And uh and as soon, and I had to read Judd with was her. like the gam. <laughs> I think Jim it might bam. <laughs> he was like, seriously, Jim, come here for a second. I, I actually think it might be on the DVD is she had to read with me doing the cable guy. So the first time we've ever we ever spoke, I was going like, <laughs> Robin, what's going on? What's with Steven? And uh, and then when she left, I said to Ben, it is so weird that Mrs. Apatow just walked into the room and sat down next to me right there. You said that right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember you talking to me about it, and it was just like, so, you know, I was going to lay it off, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> we all sort of liked her, though. We were all kind of into well, her. She's, so, she's gorgeous. Yeah. What are you talking about? She's adorable she's and hilarious. And, I, and, and, she, and also, I didn't fall in love with Jennifer Lopez, who also came in. So I want to be clear, it didn't happen. Yeah. Did J-Lo come in? J-Lo really? came in and Heather Locklear. And I also remember Selma Hayek coming in. Wow. Yes. Wow. That would have been a different movie completely. Exactly. Oh. Or a different life for me if I married J-Lo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the weird part. This is uh, this was our pre-shoot, I think. We did a little... I, I enjoyed I enjoyed this. We oh, went to the actual courthouses where they did all these trials. I think it's the only did time really? I've dyed my hair red for a film. Oh, wow. It didn't even really I didn't work. even ever notice that it was red <laughs> It before. didn't quite work. 
No, and I, I remember doing the off camera of your uh, call to 911 when when you find your dead brother. Yeah. And yeah. I was just going like, it was an Asian <laughs> gang. <laughs> the Asians. <laughs> <laughs> then you had to do an impression of me oh, when we read that it. is a sweet looking costume right there. Oh, this is yeah, this yeah, white shadow influenced kind of. There's the great Jack Black. Let's just say that everyone in this movie, including people behind the camera, were skinnier back then. <laughs> I know it's so funny. It's so funny. Wow, it's amazing. No way. And there was like very white shadow influenced uh, yeah. shorts, like short. I thought your choice of music in this scene was amazing. Yeah, we had that Loved. filter song. Oh, hey man, nice shot. Song. Yeah, and uh, there's Jeff Kahn. Did with they the know durag. what they were? What, what the song was actually being played for? Um, the band. They gave us permission. I remember yeah. he had to give us permission. I remember this. He, 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 yeah. he had well, this to... we have on the on the DVD. We have the rehearsal footage yeah. of you doing this. <laughs> yeah, and me I didn't quite with... have this moment right, this down is... yet. <laughs> <laughs> the confusion of which line I was supposed to go to. Is that to. Joel Murray? Yeah, it's Joel Murray. And Jeff Kahn. Jeff Kahn right there. Look how buff I am. And Andrew Schaefer. Freaking buff in this. <laughs> I remember that's that, one that... That's one that always gets. I remember when we shot this, you had a lot of shots and we ran out of time. And so then the last half hour of the last day was Ben just saying, just go crazy, play basketball, I'll just cover it. And then a lot of this montage was you having multiple cameras on Jim and yeah. slow-mo and not slow-mo. That's right, and I actually operated on one shot. I'll show you this one shot in here that I was operating the camera on because I, I actually missed the shot. That's good. <laughs> hard pick. Sully. It's a hard <laughs> pick on that one. And then the back one. Yeah. <laughs> that always it's respect. Fun. You gotta respect. Yeah. You gotta respect. <laughs> I actually... Jeff Conn is uh, mad. Yeah. I, I was really You're feeling really getting, him up there. getting up into his I was business feeling, there. Yeah, yeah, I was right up in it. Right up in it. One of my fingers was wet when it was over. Yeah. But I'm not sure how that This is up. my shot. I operate it. Look how I miss it. Wait. He, Jim sits up and I'm late with my reaction on the camera. Oh, Head out of the frame. Boom. There we go. Oh, I thought it was awesome. That took me a while to get that going. <laughs> now you wouldn't miss <laughs> it. Attitude in that shot. In Tropic Thunder, you don't miss that. No. Well, I don't touch the camera. <laughs> this is, and wow. then there's one shot here that I regret that we didn't do an actual uh, visual effect of you actually stepping on, on Jack Black's back. We do, we do a little uh, trick where you're stepping on a, a box behind him. Yeah. I'm like, why didn't we just put that foot on his back? Yeah. There's a small oh, there target. There, back, that one. That small target back then. Yeah. No. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, and back when they used to break the backboard in the yeah, old days. Yeah, that was when the that. Shaquille thing was happening. Right, Shaq did that. Shaq yeah. was doing that. Now it's ridiculous. I thought you got cut when we did this. Uh, you know me. I mean, go for it. Look at that. <laughs> it, it wasn't. I mean, that's not even acting anymore. It's not acting. It's psychosis. It was an insane level of commitment. I just remember every day that, Jim, you had limitless energy. There was never like, I'm tired. Let's, can I go home? And it was always like, ah, yeah. ah, how yeah. many more? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I know. Yeah. yeah we have gotten in a lot of trouble over the years by, you know, for that. Just wanting to keep going. I want to keep going. But I think we're all were at that place in our lives where we sort of had nothing else going on except our work. <laughs> we had no place to go. I, did. I was just, I just wanted to be there all the time. Yeah. But we didn't do that many takes. I don't remember being I think like we crazy did, takes. I feel like we did 20 to 30. <laughs> Seriously. I remember, I mean, uncertain shots. Some, yeah. yeah. Which is not crazy. For, no. Not for something like this. Yeah. It's so precision. I remember when, uh, I started having panic attacks around the time about three months before this from just uh, smoking too much weed and working too hard. Yeah. And I had to go into these long meetings with the head of Sony, Mark Canton. And I would oh. and I would realize like everything oh, this, was on the line for Mark on that point. <laughs> this movie's this meeting's gonna take two hours and i and I would have an anxiety attack the entire two hours. Yeah. Or like a, where we would like read through the script and it, we'd be on like page five. I'm like, I have to sit here and have a panic attack for 115 pages and yeah. not look mm. like I'm having a panic attack. Wow. I didn't know you were going through so much. Dude. Why was I not at those meetings? No wonder you were. Picking I was up saving the you from a members. lot of. Thank you. Up from a lot of painful meetings. I was just having fun planning shots, and so you were actually like the cable guy with Leslie on that. Okay, yes. Well, yeah. That was you, that you was my move. Stalking her. I wasn't really getting women without a certain level of stalking. Yeah. And to this moment, I think I'm still stalking her. I was sort of stalking my ex too, up to through this. 
And then I where was yeah. I? I kind of yeah. There was some. Who the hell was I with? There's been so many. <laughs> <laughs> My God. You were the May West. I know that I've learned. I've learned so much. I appreciate them so much. I've learned so much. Um, there just, she is, Mrs. Apatito. <laughs> she did not take the Apatow name. She kept the man. Yeah, of course. Now, this was also the scene where you found that great song uh, yeah. uh, that became a big hit, but they wouldn't let us put it on the album. Yeah. Let's listen to it. Can you hear it? How's how? How's how? Yeah, that was a good song. I've been down hearted, baby. Right. Oh, that song. Been rare. down hearted, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Standing outside a phone booth. Someone. I know. It's just... Utterly useless right. person. But the, uh, I should say here that uh, we did have really um, specific production design and color uh, palette in the movie that now that I look at it, it's made it very monochromatic. I mean, it was very blue, gray. Yeah, it's a really nice looking movie. Everything the cable and, guy wears is blue. And the choice of the thunder outside was amazing. <laughs> uh, Sharon Seymour, who did, uh, she's done a lot of great movies uh, since then. Yeah, Sharon's a production and, designer. And we had worked with her before. <coughs> and Robert Brinkman, our yeah, Robert cinematographer. Yeah, Robert Brinkman, great cinematographer. And we had a really fun time. God, how do you guys remember these people? Those are actually the only two names I do remember <laughs> in, in the entire industry. Well, I remember Robert Brinkman because he uh, he's German. He has a German accent. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he scares you. Oh, uh, yeah. Any kind of uh, okay. accent from that region of the world <laughs> scares me a little bit. I remember I was going to, uh, to Berlin on Passover and you got upset. Yes, exactly. And yeah. I went with you, and we landed at Hitler's airport. That's right. And uh, and every Temple time, Hoff? Uh, yes. That's uh, a great airport. And every sure time there was is. a really old waiter, I would think, they were there. <laughs> I know. They were there. I was in the suite. I was in the, the corner suite with the balcony, and I was like, this is the suite. This is, That's the suite. This is where Goebbels. This is the mini bar where he took us. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is Hitler's <laughs> mini bar. Exactly. I really like this scene, because this is sort of the first scene where you see... Um, that uh, the cable guy sort of, I mean, he's basically, he's probably a bipolar, don't Off you think? His hook. Yeah. I mean, I think he, the guy is in a place where he's... <laughs> he's completely he's right. He's in a bad space. He's in a bad... In this moment here. And it's the first time we're seeing that. He's showing the cards right here. And he thinks if he He's showing the river card right here. If he gives you cable, there is a transaction of friendship. There is a sense of entitlement that comes with cable, for sure. He also doesn't like that he's with a woman. That's where it gets Midnight Cowboy a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's like the friend. There's always, you know, with friends, they don't like you to fall in love. No. And it's all over. You know, even when they're not weird, they don't like you to fall in love. Go away. Then you get married, and then you, you see your friends three years later. Yeah, exactly. When, when it hits the fan. Then suddenly you want to go out and have fun with your friends. <laughs> Where you been, man? <laughs> I got eight kids. I can't go out with you anymore. And suddenly, yeah. <laughs> so all the guys from Marty. You know, it's like, hey, you guys still want to go out? No, we're all married now. How do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her hair was shorter then. Yeah, she had short hair there. And also sure did. had no issue... Looking like she was in love with Matthew. I remember there was a kiss in the movie uh, in Dailies where they kissed, and when they separated, there was like a, a string bridge of spit mm -hmm. between them that haunts me to you this day. You had that removed. You had that removed. <laughs> Don't marry an actress, Judd. Yeah. But now I'm so used to her <laughs> making asking, out with yeah. people. It doesn't bother me at all. She's Especially when you're orchestrating it. Well, I wasn't I like saying it. anything. I wasn't, I wasn't saying you're anything. You're the puppet master. That I find fun. That's when I have to hide behind the monitor. See, I've never we done that. We just did another movie together. <laughs> That's just right. Did Philip Morris. Oh, Jim makes sweet love to Leslie in, in his movie. We really? go at it. We go at oh, it like God. bandits. You, wow. You, like like bandits. Now, what was oh that my God, like? My for, forehead was bleeding from the headboard. Oh, he was pounding my really? wife. Really? My gosh, it was insane. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I dislocated her hip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind when it's friends. Between friends, it's okay. It's just molecules bouncing around. The only really person I didn't mind uh, that bothered me was Owen Wilson. Really? Because when he kissed well, of Leslie, because you figure there, that could be some, something real. Because <laughs> <laughs> because I just want to be apologized to right before you do it. Just like uh -huh. sorry, Judd, it's the job. But Owen was just like, hi, Judd. <laughs> and then well, just did it. Right. Uh, <laughs> you didn't but but she wasn't, she, you guys weren't an item at that point yet. No, right? this was on, uh, on Drillbit Taylor. They had oh, a long okay. kiss oh, on wow. a tracking shot. There's no, yeah, there's no forgiving that. You gotta have used to it in the movie. He's gotta be in there. He's the king. And Jessica, what's her name? 
Oh, Squint Eastwood. From uh, Arrested Development. Playing what? That's the mom in Arrested Development who was in Play Misty for Jessica me. Jessica Walter. Oh, this yeah. is freaky. This and is by the way, that was my zone. mother's voice dubbed in over Kathy Griffin yeah. there. Playing you did the not mom. like Kathy Griffin. I don't voice. know. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what Kathy my Griffin issue was. Kathy Griffin was going to be in this? Voice. She played your mom wow. in that shot. Oh, gosh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. But she seems to have recovered from that uh, ADR replacement. Yeah, I, I, feel, you know, I felt I like even I think watching, I was watching, watching me kid. needed the real voice of my mother. How terrible was that <laughs> that I didn't recognize <laughs> Kathy Griffin. Um, this was, I remember this sequence being uh, underscheduled by about a day. Now, this is straight out of my life, this sequence. I mean, this is like the greatest thing that could ever happen to me, this sequence. And there's I so she, wanted to be there. There's Janine, who came in for her. I mean, Janine, I, I Andy I seem to Dick. remember, isn't this something that we added because I had been to the Renaissance Fair? Yes, you were pushing Because this. I had the worst yeah. experience of my life at the Renaissance Fair. I went to the Renaissance Fair one time. What were and you I was expecting having, when you were was, <laughs> My friends were like, this is the greatest thing ever, man. Everybody's in medieval garb. And you get out of the car. And I got out of the car, and somebody, a bunch of frustrated actors came at me going, Dost thou have a mug of ale? Dost thou have like this kind of thing? And I immediately got ill and wanted out, and my friends dragged me in, and they were like, we're going to the witch's nook, man. And I was like, no, I don't want to go to the witch's nook. And they took me to the witch's nook. I ended up screaming at people. I got pulled over on the way home. I screamed at a, a cop in the parking lot trying to get out. I was trying to get in my car and get as far away from the Renaissance Fair as possible. And a cop pulled me out of the car because I was being a maniac. I was going, get it out of the way! I gotta get out of here! <laughs> no more residents out there. I must get out. And he pulled me out of the car and he said, you better calm down, son. I said, what are you going to do? Put me in a chokehold? Did you really? I said that to <laughs> a cop. Oh, really? That's wow. how badly I hated the Renaissance Fair. Sorry, everybody who loves well, the Renaissance Well, there's a great story about this. Is Andy Dick didn't know that these were the real people from medieval times. So when he was with all of them, he turned to all of them, <laughs> thinking they were actors. Is, huh? Yeah, and he's like, can you believe this place? What a bunch of losers. Oh, my God. And then he, he found out later and felt bad. Uh, but they're very talented people. This is a hard thing to do. Oh, I'm sure. I've been the back, are very... by the way, with my kids. Yeah. Well, yeah, kids got to go here for I've, sure. I have not been back since, but my... Um, I I have put chicken my, on my face. Since my daughter then. went to a party there, and I, I opted out. Yeah. Where'd I you... always love this joke. This is always one of my favorites. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you can well, tell that I'm laughing Yeah, well, Matthew's the whole really take. laughing also. <laughs> He's just going, what? I can't believe this. He's like, it's a That's long... where Matthew said, what movie am I in? What has happened? He's going, what happened to me? <laughs> War Games was so controlled. <laughs> it was so controlled. And this night, uh, you know, we weren't anywhere close to finishing the sequence. And then I, I called up uh, Sony, and they said, shut it down right now. Shut it down. And I said, seriously, we're not done like literally we have not finished the sequence and and they said you have to shut it down and i said okay and then i un i took the battery out of my phone wow and then we shot Good till job, four man. in the morning no we shot the last day was like a 17 hour day and Way then jim go. jim took a sick day the next day you have you, to because they had to yeah they, they don't know what they're doing they, no because we basically right we they were just like just get just, it done they just they but we shot to, a lot you have to mm. help them I mean, this would take usually like take like six or seven days. Yeah, I loved seeing the rehearsals on this stuff in the special uh, feature. <laughs> this was uh, the most complicated sequence you did s till you blew up the jungle. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of jokes and a lot of visual comedy and. and I remember we were so proud oh. of how many setups we were doing a day. Like we did sixty setups yep. today. We did do sixty setups one day. Yeah, like three cameras or something. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, is it see when I watch it, I don't so think it's like, weird at all. I just love it. I know. I know it's hard is to do commentary on this I because know. I just want to watch it. I want to just, watch and see where we went. Is he just sort of far. accept the level of what it is? You know, yeah. kind of. Now there was a character that Jim did on uh, In Living Color that the that some of it was based on. Wasn't it based a little bit on Dickie Peterson? Dickie Peterson, yeah, yeah, Who yeah. was the guy who protected the 7-Eleven? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Dickie Peterson, yeah. Well, he had a lift, for sure. But he wasn't a, he, he wasn't, wasn't as dark. dark you know? No, he <laughs> didn't he didn't have that sense of entitlement and that and that, you know, knowing that sooner or later you're gonna screw him over. Yeah. You know, the cable guy cable guy knows what's gonna happen. Yeah. Basically. 
Think he Peterson was just lonely, direction. hanging out at Seven Eleven with the yeah. with the walkie talkie, ta- yeah, fantasizing, talking to his mom, right? Yeah, talking to his mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this this guy, this guy knows you're gonna screw up. He'll push you to it. And this was uh, that band uh, from Australia, Nickelback. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was the young guys. Remember they from were really, up under. They were like these fourteen, from fifteen year old chair. guys. Silver chair. <laughs> Nickelback silver chair. <laughs> we worked so hard to have like the best grunge album. They were like, like fourteen years old. <laughs> Copperhead. Yeah. We were gonna score a movie with grunge music, and literally, it, the, the record came out like two weeks after grunge was over. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, those you guys, guys were 14. The now, they're, now they're 52. The, <laughs> the movie <Yeah>. is made. <laughs> there is our little uh, Star Trek tribute. <laughs> um, the idea. I love doing music yeah. with my mouth, just like you know, audibly in the scene. That's a recurring Whenever I can theme. make that choice, yeah. I do. And we did that. We scored the the movie based on the score that you created. I would love to do. I would love to do an entire action film and do the action music as the character. It's so much fun. All and you, look at that. You did that. I did that. You figured that out. Exactly. Goodbye, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you doing Spock there? Yeah, that's Spock. <laughs> it was nicely done, though, man. They will kill us both. <laughs> good, good job, ben. Is this the weirdest Thank character? You. I mean, this and Ace Ventura. Like, what are the, what's the top three weirdest Jim Carrey characters? I don't know. I don't think they've happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get a load of Pierre Pierre. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's going to be good. But yeah, this is definitely an out there character. But again, it's like, you know, when I did Dumb and Dumber and suddenly I got like a big paycheck and stuff and I didn't know what to do with myself, my reaction was to take a Bic lighter and, and pop the bonding out of my tooth with a Bic lighter and put a bowl on my head and, and cut my hair like a bowl. Because <laughs> my first like terror that went through me was that oh my god you're getting paid a lot of money you're gonna get safe and right. you're gonna like try to like be be like what you expect to be popular and and so my my reaction is always to do something outrageous to to like work against it and that's worked well for isn't you, that except- interesting <laughs> isn't that interesting that's good inside stuff that is good inside stuff well, it worked well for you up until this movie. And then, <laughs> until, and <then> we, <laughs> until I start chasing penguins around just to kiss up to the public. No, this movie rocks. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the greater masses say. <laughs> this movie is dear to me. Truly, look at that. That might be the... That, that's like a sexual that reference. That might be right the there. most sexual moment in the movie. <laughs> totally. Totally. It's, look at that. It's the kind of thing you think of in the morning. Like, we need a, something they're doing when we cut to it. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's just fill this space. Mm-hmm. What can we fill this space with? There's a space. Fill it. And Jim, do you feel like what? How do you feel at having made a lot of movies since then? Just about like uh, your your canon, and you look at like all you've done. Because when we did this, it was like movie number three, the four, right? Of the big. It ones. won't be complete, Judd. Yes. Until you do your best work with me <laughs> and do this again. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, we have to reteam. It has yes. to happen. I mean, honestly, I think the world is ready for this now. They're clamoring for They're Cable ready. Guy too. Oh, God, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. So awesome. This time we'll have a hundred million dollar budget, <laughs> and I should get paid fifty of the hundred million. Exactly. <laughs> that would be amazing. You know who should pay for it? <laughs> Jim Carrey's money. The sequel. <laughs> we get one of those Indian companies to pay for it. That's right. Yes. We Reliance. <laughs> Reliance. I'm talking to the Reliance guys. <laughs> I'm going to call Reliance right now. I know those guys. Let's do it. Let's do it. What did what did the movie end up? Uh, I mean, it made a hundred million up. around the world, sixty in the United States, forty overseas. Right. So you know, it was a money making movie. That's what was kind of this frustrating. This was crazy. It just didn't right. make as much money as it just, expected. The bar for you was very high. So mm-hmm. yeah, and they no and matter what people and the twenty million thing. It, became it doesn't like a really whole matter. Thing. It doesn't really matter what really happens. Right. It's perception. It's it's, it's what yeah. they want to happen. 
Right. You know what I mean? If if enough of the critical mass gets against you, it's what they want, you know, what the, what people want to happen. Well, there was that book that came out making fun of Sony. There was a whole book about how out of control yeah. Sony was, and it came out right. like a, six weeks before the movie came out, and people were gunning for Sony. Mm-hmm. And I remember we showed the trailer in Century City to see if the trailer would get laughs. Mm-hmm. And when the Columbia logo came up, the audience hissed. Yeah. Really? And I know, I, because they were <laughs> just suddenly, you know, educated in that direction. Yes, they just knew too much about show business. They're bad people. And and we we tried yeah. to keep this, the script a secret, and one of the extras took it, and then suddenly, like, in Entertainment Weekly or something, yeah. it said what the story of the movie yeah. was. And, and ever since then, mm-hmm. Nikki Fink has been writing stories about every deal I've ever made. Yes. It's Perfect. unbelievable. It's crazy. Obsessed. This is so pre-internet, though. Isn't it? I mean, it's really like right when yeah. it was all. I remember I just was getting into email. It was. It was just. It was right at the right on the end of furry steering wheels. That's a pretty yeah. big cell phone. That's still a pretty big cell phone. <laughs> it's a pretty big one. Yeah. It's not ridiculously big. This but. guy was genius. I mean, well, some of the characters in this party that you guys know. Well, the concept. Amazing. The concept here was uh, Rosemary's Baby, <laughs> which is always a good template for a comedy. Absolutely. We, well, there was right? a, we there, wanted it to be like the weird Rosemary's Baby vibe. Yeah, this the, woman here Rosemary. looks like she's yeah. making the shakes. She's making the shakes for the baby. But, but, the, but there was a big <laughs> rehearsal of a, a, a very long dance number to uh, bust a move. Bust a move, and then after, oh my gosh, uh, yeah, which is amazing. On the we have that footage. That's too. A, that's in the footage, and it yeah. didn't. It never. It, what? It's crazy. crazy. The You're... AD said it would take two weeks to shoot. I thought, it and was... we shot this in a day. Yeah. See, I thought it was because we couldn't clear the song. I well, also the song had so there. many uh, uh, samples that were not paid for. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. That oh, we right, right, right. That's right. right possible to track the sample. But you were doing a whole Janet Jackson, Rhythm Nation, Michael Jackson. Yeah, like was, yeah. I know. And that just shows you that it, sometimes your limitations become the form that you work with people, <laughs> you know. And that's amazing. That's good information, right? I mean, that's good information if you're listening For to For all this. the film students out there, are they learning anything about film? Yeah. I never know if these things are meant to be entertaining or informative. I don't know what they're supposed to be. Even this is your, this is your I'm first out right now. It's your first commentary right now. I feel so so virginic. I kind of feel like you should do some impressions since it's kind of an audio situation. Yeah, I really should. What, what <laughs> can I do? <laughs> do your Clint Eastwood face. <laughs> Wait a second. On, check dude. out my just watching check that. out my Bruce Dern. Yeah, there. I was just watching that. If you were in the room, now. you'd love it. You're a real uh, hard man. There Mr. is like Anderson. an incredible YouTube of uh, you, like one of your you know sets from early days, doing all just the yeah. impressions with no. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, with uh, yeah, I was on Johnny Carson. I was on the Johnny Carson show. Remember him? He laid it down. Yeah, that was good stuff. You were on with Johnny. Look at that high kick right there. Did you meet Johnny Carson, Jim? Were you I on did. With him? I was on twice with Johnny Carson. Wow. Was wow. he nice? He was awesome, man. He was great. I loved him. Yeah. I loved him. He was on something for sure. But uh, <laughs> he had years. That's good information, right? He had <laughs> questionable uh, years of sobriety. No, I don't know. I don't know what he was doing, but he had energy like to burn. It was crazy. Between like, you know, when the commercials hit and stuff, he'd just be looking at you out of the corner of his eye and like drumming with the pencils and stuff and going <laughs> <laughs> like this, just like going like the Hobbs of Hell, man. It's like it's like, wow, he's like a child. I he's wonder, like a I wonder, child. He's a man child. I wonder where he gets this energy. <laughs> I wonder where he gets this energy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Jack Black. Jack Black right here. I mean, everything he does is cool. Well, at that point, the only movies he had been in was like Bob Roberts and Mars Attacks. And right. I think uh, Dead Man Walking he had a, a mm-hmm. part in. Play but, the brother. You know, but this movie, uh, and uh, not to brag for all of us, but uh, it really is the first movie for so many people, or at least a collection of everyone we found yeah. funny. Between yeah. Janine Garofalo and Andy Dick and David Everybody Cross went and Jack on to do Black great and stuff. Owen, Leslie and Owen, and um, it was Owen's second movie, right? Yeah, it was done Bottle Rocket because, by the way, when well we can talk about when he comes on, but when Owen auditioned, I remember him coming in and everybody from Bottle Rocket came in to audition, and Owen came in and yeah. it was funny. And they had, they had, I hadn't seen Bottle Rocket the movie. There was the Bottle Rocket short, and we saw some clips of the movie. Yeah. And they'd done a short of it, and uh, yeah, he was he's so, so funny, original, but so he, different. But, but he did not do a great audition. He no, did, yeah, no, and because I because in the movie, he's his choices are so interesting. Yeah, no, he went, but the audition he was okay, 
And I remember saying to you, like, I'm not sure that audition wasn't great. And you were like, no, you got to hire that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Come bottle on. rocket yeah, was too good. Hire that guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, man. He's just a total original. And that's from Star Charles Trek. Charles Napier. You got to love him. Yeah, he's, I mean, in the Russ. Uh, yeah. He's one of those like seventy-year-old guys that'll still kick your ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. He's like Merle Haggard's like best old friend. Old Hollywood and shit. He'll mm -hmm. just walk in front of a car and stop it. Yeah, I worked with him on The Critic. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I remember recording this and uh, and Jim. It was so hard to sing that you had to like every three lines take a break and yeah. start over. Take a breath. <laughs> Look at my head is about to explode in some of these shots. There's a big giant vein in the center of my forehead. That, that, what are you that thinking pulsates. when you're doing this? What are you thinking? I'm, I'm splashing the front row. <laughs> splashing the front row with fluids. I should do a musical, man. That's my friend Paul Greco. Do musical. Let's do a musical together. Yeah. We got to bring that back, that whole musical thing. <laughs> I, I hope everyone in the scene is still alive. <laughs> Eventually, they'll all be dead. <laughs> They got it right. They got it right. I do remember this day, Ben and I, being somewhat shocked that That's when your the real energy level, your, your energy right level, here? take after take after take after take, was, was <laughs> like it literally threw me as a person that it was possible. Yeah, and I didn't have the snowball. There was no snowball. It was just me. I was out of my mind. Natural I'm snowball. I'm a desperate human being. <laughs> do you feel like you're needier now or then? Uh, I'm definitely in more pain now than I was. <laughs> uh, Me too. I'll I'm join you. More there. confused. Does uh, success more bring confused. about uh, peace and calm, or more pain? You know what? It yeah. What, what when you start to realize that peace and calm are actually uh, not going to help you in the business, <laughs> that they'll actually be bad for your career. That's when the the real divide happens. <laughs> that's when the real divide starts to work on you. You know, when you start to go, oh, I I could work towards peace. Right. I could find bliss, but I won't have a career. Right. I won't if be there's not, If there we'll isn't a void, if there's not a void to fill. Exactly. With outside. It's things, all about then, abandonment. It's all right. about need. It's all about worthlessness. If I remain worthless in my own mind, I will be the right. king of show business. Those are the building blocks of success. <laughs> totally. I, re I remember John Cleese saying that he's like much happier now, and he knows he's not as funny. Yeah. But he doesn't care because he's happier now. But I have totally. to say, he seems pretty pissed lately, and pretty funny. So <laughs> he got divorced recently. Okay. So. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Girls will make you funny. Yeah, pain. Women I mean, will make you funny. That's for sure. Pain and uh, pain and humor go together. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But there has to be also the other mm -hmm. element. Oh, Ren and Stimpy, I love that. I love it. It's just everything um, we love in everything the movie. We love. Everything we love. In. Yeah. Scrambled eggs. Scramby eggs. Scramby eggs. Scramby yeah. eggs. <laughs> so I remember we did about 30 or so takes of this scene. Did we? Yes. It we rehearsed one... it too in the in the yeah, special we, edition. We uh, and and there's yeah, it's basically one shot most of it. There's no. I love how it turned out. Though. It's like you guys just it. had sex. Love it. Just what I needed. Well, I'll tell you something. Look at the psych. It's so real. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is that? Is that West Village? <laughs> what is that? That's uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, right? Nondescript city. I remember, it, I remember this from the very first uh, Lou Holtz draft as being like the scene that made you want to make this movie. Yeah. You know, I bought this time, you buy next time. <laughs> it's so warped. <laughs> Everybody gets hookers for their friends. Of course. Matthew's really, really great in this scene. Yeah. What do you mean by what? Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> My eye just goes to Matthew in yeah, this scene. Yeah, I don't know sure why. Does. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Possibly because you're favoring him in the frame. <laughs> you're right. He's so much bigger in the frame. Yeah. There, oh, he it? knows how to upstage. He knows how to like just shift his weight slightly <laughs> to the left and draw my face away from the camera. Hey, nice. Hey, hey. Nice. It's okay. She's totally clean. <laughs> <laughs> I tried her out. All prostitutes should be pre-tried out by friends. Not a drip. Drip. What disease gives you the drip? Gonorrhea? There ought to be like a little dictionary <laughs> for this guy. Friends like that. Get out of my house. 
I always like that. So it's very, it's like, <laughs> get out of my house. He's very vulnerable with that. You might even have been able to get a freebie. Who knows? <laughs> Just get out now. I don't ever want to see you again. This is where the movie turns into a dark place. Yeah. You can't kick out the cable guy and take him out of your life without some problems. Do you remember you used to call out for Kukuru on the set a lot? Yeah. Kukuru. Kukuru. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to keep me emotionally stable. I also remember when we were shooting a scene in the movie, my stomach growled so loud that Ben said, Will everyone be quiet? It just sounded like a voice. It's like, <laughs> And in the rehearsal, uh, you, you went to a full on crying place. Yes, I did. Which was funny, and I wonder why we didn't use that because it was pretty fun. Yeah. Well, all this, right. now this is, this is what movies are all about. And that's right Cynthia here. LaMontagne. She was one of the twins in Flirting with Disaster. Jeez, man, look how gorgeous she is. Yeah. I mean, holy moly, I totally missed the boat on this whole thing. <laughs> Everywhere. You, I wonder where your head was at. Let's see. Oh, really? you're being that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the most stimulating guy to be around. <laughs> nice cover, huh? <laughs> so Nice cover. And Owen was so funny. I, I, he was pissed this about scene. this. He didn't oh, like no, he this. Didn't, he didn't yeah. like the fact that I got to beat him up in this scene. And then That's you made him heard, right? suck on the air blower. And yeah. I thought he liked it, so I gave him a photograph of it. And then he, <laughs> then someone told me he tore it up and put it in the garbage. Right. And like one minute later. You, yeah, I mean, I think he, you know, yeah, for him it was like uh, this is his first movie, other or first like sort of studio movie. And he's became like this ragdoll prop for you. <laughs> uh, I mean, he got dominated. Oh, Unfortunately, things didn't work out for him in his career, but. Yeah, whatever. Take a break. It was a nice shot for him. I, I also liked his. I liked him. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Yeah, he knew was what good. he was doing. Yeah, he just sucked up that moment, didn't he? <laughs> I stole it from he you. Just, yeah, he just like. Hey, what's this with our chicken? And this became its own little movie between he's the two so of them. good in this. <laughs> well, maybe you can go check on it for me, my friend. If it's not too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie is shocked. <laughs> See the attitude? Unbelievable. Look at him. Like, hysterical. Oh, is that I'm hysterical. I'm hysterical. I love that. Was that an improv? Yeah, yeah. he just totally went off on this. I remember that was when I'd, I'd, I, I was the first time I ever worked with him. I was like, oh, this guy. Wait a minute. This guy is hilarious. <laughs> he is funny. Oh, hold that thought. For just a second, I need to use the head, and I'll be right back. <laughs> hold that thought. I need to use the head. I'm curious about it. I'm curious. I'm curious. He walks away. <laughs> now this song that plays here, "Salt Peanuts" by Dizzy Gillespie, was produced by my my grandfather, the late Bobby Shad. So I always wow. this, for me it was like a cool thing. That, That's good inside stuff, Judd. Yeah, this is good material <laughs> for <laughs> stuff. <laughs> DVD. Film students lead that one up. Oh, wow. Go up and get it on the uh, iTunes. This, this is one of my favorite little moments here. It's very it's very Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Remarkably mild. People pure evil, to pure him. evil. See, I didn't know Owen would be the kind of guy who didn't like this kind of scene. So, like, we're shoving his face in the toilet, <laughs> making him suck on the air thing, and we just didn't know him that well. Yeah. Oh, it's all a, leverage. It's all leverage. He's a very macho guy. I don't think he wants to be. <laughs> he's from Texas, isn't he? Yeah. He doesn't yeah, want Freddie Mercury do this to, to do this to Texas. <laughs> he doesn't want to be beat up by Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> you need to look your best. <laughs> What's one of those songs? What's the Freddie Mercury from this era song? Uh, oh, well, don't sing it. It'll cost us two hundred thousand dollars. No songs. <laughs> oh, no songs, right? <laughs> Make one up. I can't imagine why Owen didn't like doing this thing. <laughs> That's vinegar. I was, I was pure vinegar. I had vinegar put in there. <laughs> yeah, where have you gone? Now, at this point, it was just lost any <laughs> touch Man. with reality. At this point. <laughs> I rather. I, I remember like he was rather heavy. Started. It was hard to get him thrown across the room there. <laughs> then he gets one shot in it. <laughs> yeah, and doesn't connect. <laughs> oh no! That's very phallic. It's even funnier knowing that he hated it. <laughs> I don't know why. He's, he's literally he's going gonna, to a, a safe place. He's, like, he's going to a happy place right there. <laughs> he's, going, he's going, come he's gonna on. Keep his eyes closed. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> he's like, Bob should have done this. Bob Musgrave like, should have done this. Ben will protect me. Ben will protect me. He'll cut this right. Yeah, we He'll have no cut trust it. at I'll that point. I'll look good. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be fine. That's funny. I'll look tough at the end of this. <laughs> 
We should talk about the cable our gr- guy was so angular there. <laughs> We should talk about angular. our great uh, editor, the great uh, Stephen Weisberg. Yeah, Stephen was great. Stephen yes. did a lot of Harry Potters after this. Yeah, it, it launched him in a big way. He mm-hmm. worked with Corone a lot. Alpha. This was a step up oh, from, yeah. for him wow. from Corone. <laughs> <laughs> the police sketch is exactly right. It's fantastic. Fly yeah, I really, they got it. <laughs> he didn't notice it. He didn't look like you. <laughs> yeah, and this is our. Uh, wow, that is so freaky because that Roberts. happened later on. <laughs> He was I great. loved him in this. Very exciting. And Eric dyed his hair red, too, for this. He that the was same. amazing. It's awesome you got him to do this. Sam and Stan Sweet in Brother, Sweet Brother. You know, I forget sometimes that I was in a movie with Eric Roberts. That's bizarre. Hope of Greenwich Village. Yeah. yeah. No, I was in this one. Well, I'm talking about this one, John. <laughs> I, I wasn't thought you were... in the Pope of Greenwich Village. Oh, I thought you, you did the Mickey Rourke part. Yeah. I'm sort of obsessed with your hair in this movie, too. This is the Mickey Rourke uh, commentary. I think it was... Uh, sort of was uh, I have an upgrade order for I have five dogs. I have five dogs. Yeah, it was a really beautiful day, day this day. <laughs> and uh, I remember I beat a guy up on the way in from the uh, airport, and I was... Because uh, he looked at me and he asked me for my, the time, and I uh, just said, what are you trying to prove? I mean, what are you, tra- what are you really trying to say to me? And, uh, and he looked at me funny, and so I... Uh, I ate him. No, I promised Stephen I, I wouldn't. I actually ate a human being. Oh my goodness, look what I've done. <laughs> you didn't know it for me. This is where you're trying to be sexy and charming with Robin. Yeah, yeah. This is where I lost her and you got her. <laughs> <laughs> the vent. The vent. The vent of death. This was, uh... This is the creepy one. This is because this really scared me because I hate spiders. But I still was willing I had to do the spider on the face. Yeah. Um, these I can't even. That comes, I can't that, even look at that now, knowing that she's later. your wife. I can't even look at that. I can't even watch this scene. Don't look at my wife's back, I, please. I can't even look at it. I can't even see it. <laughs> I can't even look. Nope. That's weird. I, I, I still make her wear that outfit. Okay. While I act like the cable guy. <laughs> Why have we all aged, but your wife hasn't aged? What is going on with that? Oh, uh, it's a, it's a goyim thing. Yeah, it's amazing. Talking about, I keep bumping into people who are like way older than me, realizing that I now look older than them. Uh, <laughs> like yeah. I was talking to Robin. They Williams. work out, Judd. They Robin, work out. Robin, Robin Williams they work is like out and they drink water. They work out and they drink water. <laughs> but like I saw Robin Williams, and he's like almost like twenty years older than me, and he and he, no, he talks you know to me like I'm the same age as him, and he looks. But you know, I'm why, getting though? closer to his. No, look. I was thinking about that Catching yesterday. Up. It's when you get older, everybody just catches up with each other. Right? Yeah. So, like, then people are like 30 years older than you. When you're like, they're like, you know, whatever, 80 and you're 50, everybody's just old. Guys, the movie. <laughs> I think we're supposed to talk about the film. I always like this joke about uh, don't go uh, bungee jumping in Mexico. They just don't have the regulations. Right. Yeah. This is his backstory, his sad backstory. <laughs> yeah. I always thought it was a, uh, it was a lie. He made it up. I'm not sure he knows. It <laughs> might have come from a TV show. <laughs> crossed over somehow. The reality of it crossed over. A Barnaby Jones episode. Yeah, yeah. I've said too much. We're caught up in the movie now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's now here for our entertainment. Cherish him, Robin. Every hair on his head. Every hair on his back. I'm sorry. <laughs> And it worked. I, I like when we try to establish what his job is. Yeah, the hard hats. Yeah. What is this job is that he has? Hilarious. He's, he's an, an architect. architect. He's yeah, such he's a checking, funny act. He's checking plans. Of course he is. Of course he is. He's checking plans. <laughs> We're the same plans in like some other movie that I just shifted yeah. over here. Well, we were kind of trying to do that sort of like every scene from one of those movies that yeah. you've seen. Yeah, that's true. You it was know? a parody. Was that's like, right. But, but like, but parody, but not, but, you know, it was tribute. Kind of like tribute. The, homage. Tribute. Homage. <laughs> that's a line, Ben. It's hard ben to... and I always like that line where it's like kind of a parody, but not quite, but not quite the story right in the middle there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's where we lived for a long time. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Oh, this moment right here with Jack Black shows you. Are you ready to rock? Wait, it's coming. The concert, oh Jesus. Wait, what? this is one of my favorite Robin. moments. I think that we're getting back together. Right here. So you're blowing me off. I can't believe this. What? You do this every time, man. I don't know why That's I put concert. up with it anymore. 
That. <laughs> that showed me Jack Black was going to be a superstar. That's yeah. where he invented that. That was a beautiful move. Sweet. I actually like, like his very, he just stonewalls him yeah. here. Maybe I'll take my cable guy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another Such kind an of male movie. relationship moment. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember shooting in the rain. There was a lot of way, rain. This shoots. this this location yep. became the location of the sanitarium in '23. Really? Yes. We sh we went back there to shoot in '23. I get wow. led out of out of the sanitarium, and it's this location, hmm. which is 23 Cedar Road. <laughs> I did 23 takes, and how many months was this before um. the? Uh... Okay. <laughs> Are you still into the number 23? Uh, it still occurs. It it occurs in my <laughs> it life. It occurs. Yeah. Yeah, it occurs in my life. I'm not sure if we're still on a 23-degree axis of the globe <laughs> now since the Chilean earthquake. But I remember shooting this in, in, the, issue. in the fake rain, and it, it was not pleasant for either of you. We hated yeah. it. But look at you there. You just let, you don't flinch. You're just no. letting hardly I'm, I'm actually blinking. peeing. I'm peeing right there. <laughs> I'm You're trying so hard not to blink. No, I'm just letting go. I'm letting, I've, let, I've let go of my bowels. <laughs> <laughs> right there. You can see it in this okay. moment. Right. Yeah, the rain stuff. There was a lot of rain for now for the rest of the movie. <laughs> I also remember right after this, we were working on Liar Liar. And it also felt like we had learned so much from the cable guy right. of like, Things that people get scared of and what not, <laughs> what not to, to do. do that would scare people yeah. or whatever. Oh, and, uh, gosh, but that's what you want. That's, that's what you want. I remember at the, you premiere, wanna, at the premiere, at the premiere, Tom Shadiak looked at me like after the movie and just I remember he just had this look like, "What have you done? <laughs> what have you done to Jim? <laughs> to my sweet Jim? <laughs> to my sweet Jim? <laughs> people want to love him. They didn't understand. I remember being at Universal City Walk and I, and I loved the movie so much. And then I just looked at the at the people walking around Universal City Walk and it just hit me like. They don't want this. Right. They don't this want is them. not what they want. <laughs> I still don't understand it. I don't understand what happened. And uh, here, the score, I like the score here. John Ottman did our score, who is a very talented editor and composer. Who did the usual suspect score yeah. and edited it mm, as well? Yes, yeah. Works with wow. Brian Singer a lot. Beautiful. I didn't have any cracks. Very many, very few cracks then. Man, the camera's right in there. Yeah, right in there. I only, only had a couple of cracks. I was, what, 38? No, I was 30. 95. Seven. How old? Really? 37? Something like that. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. I looked pretty good. Not too bad. Not like now. <laughs> <laughs> the hair, though. I'm obsessed with your hair in the movie because I just think you got it so, it's so perfectly thick. thick and black. And yeah, it really rocked, man. It was so it was it was weird. It was weird no. in my life. No, I did, hair. I, I, no, I did he, the hair. I was so impressed. It was, like, it, was it. It's very Eddie Munster-like hair, mm -hmm. which we always like. It was great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, man. You took your cojones and mine, and you put them on the table, and you slam dumped it. Anybody else here you tired of being famous? Seriously, Judd. <laughs> Judd, you can't even go anywhere, can you? I can't. I can't, uh, can't go anywhere. I can't go into a temple without someone trying to get me to marry their daughter. You can't go to, like, a halo <laughs> gathering or anything without anybody <laughs> crawling all over you. And Ben, you're just like, forget right. it. You're forget like it. the dollar bill. Forget it. What the hell? Everybody you feels like money. they know me. You print money. <laughs> David Cross. Oh, yeah. On the left side of the frame. David right? Cross. We love David Cross. Yeah. How many people were in this movie? We started the industry. <laughs> this was the first movie ever made in Hollywood. This was the touchstone. He didn't do anything else. And that's my so. sister. My sister playing uh, Matthew's <laughs> secretary, Amy. Uh, there was a lot of actors wanting that part, but your sister got it. Oh, she's an actress, right? She is an actress, yes. yeah. yeah. She was in the Great Husbands and Wives right. sketch on only, uh, yeah, that's the right. Ben Stiller show as Judy Davis. Oh. And the great George Siegel, who I You know I what love. I mean? Dick and Jane. Yeah. Dick and Jane. The original, right? Yeah, the amazing, amazing And he George was in this, because uh, I, just, him. I just worked with him in Flirting with Disaster. And that's how He's amazing. talk came up. He's amazing. The nicest guy ever to hang out with. So funny. Every second with Super him was talented. so great. I, I remembered. Every morning, hanging out but with him in the beginning of the day. Too. Totally yeah. subversive. Yeah. His movies and stuff were completely subversive. Now, that's Charles Robinson. You know, was, was my Uncle Charlie growing up. Was a really good, he's wow. since passed, good oh friend gosh. of my parents. Oh no. We used to go to his house in the Hollywood Hills when I was a kid, my sister and I. 
for sleepovers. And he they would, passed away now. Yes, he was wow. a, an incredible guy. Wow! And, and it was on. It was in every TV show ever. Well, that's produced. when the journey begins. That's what they say. That's when the real journey that's begins. That's right. And John O'Donoghue from the Ben Stiller show. That's right. Former cop. Yeah. And I'll be your friend. Lockdown. And that's tattoo head guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a real tattoo. Yeah. 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 And here we go. It was, you know, you got to have a character. Yeah, this was a good one. I had an interesting thing to say about George Siegel, and I can't remember what it was. Um, he was in Carbon um, Copy with Denzel Washington. That was true. it. Okay, that must have been Carbon it. Copy. <laughs> <laughs> that's one movie you just don't remember either of them being in. Oh, you know what was interesting before. about it is that he drove my father crazy when he used to go on the uh, Tonight Show and play the banjo. Yes. My father was a musician. He was like big band guy. You know, he had his own orchestra in Toronto. And he would get violent when George Siegel went on the Tonight Show. He hated him playing the banjo. He hated it. The George Siegel put that damn banjo away. George Siegel was so funny. (laughs) Really uh, extraordinarily upset. He was on the Larry Sanders show and like the joke would be like, Someone dropped out, and then it would, we'd always, you know, cut to George Siegel playing the banjo. Uh-huh. Like, that was, like, the nightmare fill-in. <laughs> and George Siegel thought it was so funny, like, that joke of, uh-huh. like, we couldn't get anyone, and cut to him playing the banjo. <laughs> He's like, what's the joke? Yeah, I don't uh, think that's... he took himself real seriously, <laughs> no. but he made my father violent. Paul Schaefer, too. Really? My father really? could not take Paul Schaefer. I don't know why. I like Paul Schaefer. Does Paul know that? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not, I actually, that was a nice-looking breast. I was uh, my breast was good looking back then. Look at that. What's it look like now? Well, it's a star now. It's a starfish. It's like a starfish. <laughs> it's, it's pierced, right? Yeah, it's pierced. Right. The piercings. I've had so many piercings now. It's like, it's like a. So the impl- sponge. The, the implication is that Matthew is going to get raped as a result of this. I just wanted to keep the theme clear in the yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, and that was that's sugar glass right there. Breakaway had to be, had to be. What lens is that, Ben, you think? Uh, it's the lens that didn't rack focus. We kept them out of focus <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> there was madness in those eyes, though. There was yeah. something going on there for sure. Sometimes when I watch the movie, oh, I him think... him, too. <laughs> Wait. I, I always thought that the movie was going to be like this kind of super wild roller coaster ride that would just be kind of also just super fun and delightful. But then when I, we watched it, it also did have true madness in it. Mm-hmm. I think it was a roller coaster. I just was going down the whole time. <laughs> a big drop. Oh, I disagree. And this is I think like, it's sublime. No, it, it's a fun drop. Yeah. But, it's just, <laughs> but I remember yeah. when Jim said, at the end of the movie, I have to die. I need to jump off the tower yeah. and, and die. Well, and you it, should have died. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I really should have. But that's the thing. When you go halfway, it never works. That's my fault. I it's take like, responsibility. It's like, you know, a series of unfortunate events. They were, weren't going to let us... Uh, kill you. you that was not going to happen. Huh? They weren't going to let us kill you. No, of course not. So we thought we'd oh, take it Oh, yes. Well, this is straight from my life now. Remember this? Porno password. Porno password, straight from my life. This is what I used to play with my parents. Oh. I had a kind of a warped growing experience. Uh, there was a lot of abandonment. and uh, But when we did get together, we had some fun. This is porno password you was one of the together, things you'd play porno password. We played porno password, and it was one of the most hilarious things ever. When my mother would say things like areola and things like that, <laughs> and uh, and and worse, and worse. They were Catholics. We were Catholics, but it was the kind of Catholics that just send their kids to church. That's where it all comes together now. <laughs> oh boy, he's got the proof. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that many, Matthew grabs his I know face. he grabs his own mouth. And also in the scene, Bob Odenkirk. That's right. The great Bob Odenkirk. Are you kidding me? I mean, honestly, you guys know a lot of cool people. I'm really glad to be a part of it. <laughs> they had to laugh, too. They had to laugh at me. Annabelle Gerwich. Yep. The guy almost took my head off. <laughs> I sometimes wonder what other actors think of this person who's doing this thing. I do. I do think from that perspective sometimes that it's just... So demented, and trained actors have to sit in a scene with me and go like, "Just accept it. It's, <laughs> it's what's happening." That's right what, now. That's what Matthew's Just thinking accept it. right there in the I scene know. right now. He's like, I have to, <laughs> "They're <laughs> all trained, the classical actors." Matthew's like, "I was on Broadway. Yeah, I was 15. Yeah." I really do like this scene though. What is he it's, doing? It's, yeah, no, the the tenderness. It's pure <laughs> cable guy. 
here. <laughs> I still remember being People in this. People don't understand truly how warped you are, man. <laughs> they really don't even know. They haven't scratched the surface. I've, yeah. It's sort of, yeah. Is my, uh, the iceberg is large <laughs> under, under the under sea level there. I just love how close you get to people. <laughs> it's like I'm throwing something on her. You just get in people's space a lot in this movie. Now, so this was the second movie you directed great. after Reality Bites. That's right. But did you did you feel like, oh, I'm not getting as much acting work at this time, and that's why I'm going to direct? Or how do you decide how much to direct versus acting? Because it takes so long to direct. Well, this was a weird period in time when I I'd sort of had a career as an actor, but not really, kind of. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, guys. Not about Jim. Let's go back no, to no, the no. beginning. When I was about 15, I... <laughs> I played with the idea of becoming an actor. You um, didn't direct for quite some time after this, though, did you? No, I, nobody was banging down the door. <laughs> okay, let's be, let's call. I mean, yeah, basically, I, I got a new agent after this. You make when, large choices sometimes. Yeah. It's like, honest to God, it's like it can be completely like a rocket ship or people end. Yeah. They no, end. My, I, I, like, I, my, I, my new agent said, okay, basically you, you just don't do anything for about six months. Yeah. You can't really do anything hide, for about six months. Hide under the porch. <laughs> and then, uh, then, we'll, then we'll start to see, we'll see where we're at. <laughs> we'll see where we're at. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it's definitely, you know, it's so obvious in show business when, when a movie, you know, doesn't make a lot of money or, yeah. you know, then people don't call. But then you, you did call. zero effect and then right into something about Mary? Is that what happened? I did. Uh, well, yeah. After this, I did uh, Zero Effect, Something About Mary, Permanent Midnight. Oh, Permanent Midnight. And Your Friends and Neighbors. I could keep going, Jim, if you'd like me to go. But I, I love it. No, I but I'm hearing it. I remember I when, you, when you got Something About Mary, it was a big deal because your star had not risen, and that was a gigantic thing that you got the lead in that yes. movie. Yeah. yeah. It was huge. The Farrelly Brothers gave me a chance because they liked Flirting with Disaster. But, that yes. was, but in terms of directing, Which is one of the classic comedies of all time, by the way. It, it was, and I'm I'm kind of like toying, you know, playing around with David Russell right now. Talking he's about he's quite a, just quite a guy to play around with. Oh my gosh, <laughs> crazed. <laughs> you two together would be great, though. That'd be we do we do uh, yeah fire off on yeah. all cylinders yeah, for yeah. sure. But that was a genius movie, yeah. man. I love that movie. Um, but it was a weird time where like I wasn't sort. I didn't know if I was what I was gonna. Be when you doing, when you, you know? kissed Taya in that movie, did you really yeah. kiss her or just you know, <laughs> was like a stage kiss her? When you really kissed versus her, how you stuff. kissed her I mean, in front of Dick and Jane. Thing. Well, we went for it. I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, no, we, I mean we, honestly. Yeah. We it was crazy what was happening outside the frame. I just remember once we were at this restaurant after something about Mary, and you were saying, like, it's really weird. Everyone keeps walking up to me with, like, their hair gelled up, uh, like, with semen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? No, yeah. come on. And then, like, literally a girl walked up to the table and said, could you come say hello to my friends? And you walked over, and then you came back and said, like, one of the girls had the hair gelled up with the yeah 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 the something about Mary thing. It's a nice thing. That's nice. It's nice having catchphrases, nice visuals about that. that people yell at you, and kids come up with their hair gelled up like that and sing yeah. songs. It's <laughs> Halloween. That was a big thing at Halloween. But you were living. Probably. I mean, when we did this movie, the cum hair was huge at Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> But this was your reality, Jim, when you were making this movie. Was, has, had already been like that for a few I don't years. even remember. Oh, yes, I do remember being famous. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Uh, it was odd. It was very odd. I remember being in the mall with you, Jim, in New Jersey. Yeah. Right during when In Living Color just got hot. When I was standing in the middle of the mall pointing we, at myself. <laughs> we, were, we were in a bookstore, and suddenly people started walking up to you, and then more people, and then more people, and then we realized... Every single person in the mall is headed towards you. Yeah. And then it got kind of dangerous yeah. for us to get yeah. out and became a hard day's night moment. Exactly. And that's why I'm a, I'm a martial artist. <laughs> that's why I'm a weapons expert. <laughs> Throwing stars? Throwing stars, yeah. yeah. High artillery. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm loaded for bear. I'm, 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 I'm armed to the tits. So now he's getting in trouble because uh, he makes fun of the hair. Yeah. This is like the early days of uh, They're both computers, farting. They're too. They're farting in this scene, both of them. This seemed cutting edge to like get in trouble for something you said on the computer back then in 96. Yeah. yeah, but look at the computers. It's pre-YouTube. <laughs> Beautiful. It's pre look at David Cross's hair. He's David got some. David Cross yeah. rocks, man. I love him. I love him. In a weird, yeah. odd way. It's too much love for someone like him. 
<laughs> he can't handle it. Does he know about this? He doesn't even know about it. Okay. If he did, he wouldn't be able to handle it. He wouldn't know how much. He, yeah, truly. I might have said this earlier, but for me, though, this movie does represent uh, a comedic actor uh, taking chances at the height of his um, confidence and popularity and ability to do so. David and, Cross, he's amazing. I was talking about me. I'm oh, sorry. yes, um, okay. No, but really, Jim, like, to me, that's what, what is cool about this movie is that somebody just with total confidence saying, I'm going to do this and, yeah. and explore it fully. Well, thank you, Ben. I, I mean, honestly, it really is a disease. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a direct... For better or for worse. That's no, no, it it's is, a good though. thing. It is a, it is a direct reaction to feeling like you're making it or like you're going to be uh, thought of as establishment. And but Honestly. And, yeah, but and I, still, that... I still live there. I literally right. would put my head through a pane of glass before, uh, before I, uh, you know am thought of as predictable. And that's why you had sex with Ewan McGregor? That's why I went all the way. <laughs> I turned him out. I turned that mother out. He loved it. <laughs> I love Jack Black. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> There's so he, much he doesn't this. like me, though, does he? <laughs> no, so he much. doesn't. I've heard he doesn't. I've heard he doesn't like me. There's so much of this of like people that we just thought should be know. the comedy stars. You guys would know. Do you know? Um, Jack likes me. You never really know with Jack. No, he's an odd bird, isn't he? He has an impish attitude that will never really yeah. let you know how he feels about you. <laughs> yeah. I, but a, yet he's never badmouthed anyone to me I'm, either. Yeah. And he said some stuff. But Jack. <laughs> he said you know, stuff. honestly though, stuff. to me though, Jack is like is like you in terms of the type of guy who will just keep on going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he just wants to do it. And no. It right? He's, and have fun he's doing madness. it. He's madness personified. It's in his eyes. You can tell there's just like the wheels are loose. The wheels are loose. <laughs> but don't you find that, Judd, they're like actors who will who are just there because they want to be there. It doesn't matter what they're getting paid or anything. It's just like they're going to do it until they're someone going says, don't to do, do it, it anymore. It. Yeah, they're going to do it or they're, or they're going to kill the president. It's yeah. going to be one or two. <laughs> It's going to be that or a political assassination. It's like, I would like to have seen what John Wilkes Booth's acting was like, because I bet it was pretty edgy. He was apparently the Tom Cruise of his time. Really? Yeah, he was. He was wow. that popular. Wow. Driven. Really? Oh, now, here's, I think, where we lost the kids. <laughs> <laughs> this might have been where we lost them. And we had this very elaborate uh, nightmare sequence where your face came out of the TV that we didn't <laughs> use. Which I, I'm looking at it. I, you know, by it the really way, we, did we, get darker we, and darker yeah. and darker. We it's definitely so... should have kept that in. Because that? that's on the features, too. What's the that? The part where you come out of the TV and you go, and you oh, eat them. Oh, right. I forgot all it's about that. It's amazing. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Look at this. This has my favorite piece of physical comedy, the walk away yeah, sequence. The walk away when he walks in the circle down the Just stairs. That. He's still trying to I mean, to what you were through. doing here, it's like. <laughs> Why is he going down the stairs? <laughs> like he can pull it off in front of the the uh, the peephole. That's like a Roman Polanski <laughs> shot, right? From, yeah, uh, it really is. Repulsion yeah. was the movie we looked at for this oh, sequence. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> we're very filmic. <laughs> yeah, it's also we thought yeah, we're great being, choice. We thought we were being really cool. Yeah. This is going to be the repulsion sequence. Oh, this because we saw awesome. one foreign film in our whole right. lives. <laughs> Jim Carrey, the lovable, cuddly Jim, <laughs> as you know and love him. Even in the yeah. theater, you can oh, feel the, people getting scared the, here. The Mod Squad theme Mod music. Squad. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lincoln Hayes. Yeah. I'm Lincoln Hayes. I'm going to take you down. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being really impressed by the Force Perspective set. <laughs> remember there was a Force Perspective set yeah. of that hallway? Yeah. We were, I was uh, like, wow, here's this the is spider. Cool. Oh, here's the spider. spider. Yeah. It took a while to get that spider to walk across your face. Do you remember, Jim? This Inky was... Dinky, the spider, is the is actually Inky Dinky. Got 20 million for this. This was the last shot that you did in the movie, Jim. Is it really? Yeah. And I remember we were not allowed to have you, have you use the words to Ipanema because the guy wrote it about his wife, and he didn't like that you, like, uh, went, 
said the words, then went, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we only had you hum it. And it was really hard to even get them to let you hum it. There it oh, is. Oh, there it is. That is not right. That's not right, man. I Ooh. saw the same shot in 127 hours. Really? So there is an influence. Really? Yes, a lot of ants on Franco's face oh, in 127 hours. Wow. CGI ants, though. I feel like that was one of the first ideas you had was you wanted a spider to go across your face. I know. And why did I want that? I hate spiders. You see what I'm saying? I'm being very excited about it. Yeah. And that house was his house from The Exorcist. That's the house from The Exorcist that they use in The Exorcist. Remember? <laughs> are you making things up at this What point? are you talking about? No, that was in Pasadena. That was a friggin' exorcist thing in Georgetown, right? This was Georgetown. That's the house this. from Celtic Pride. Yeah. <laughs> and she was in Carrie. She was the mother in Carrie. Yep. That actress. I just let my daughter watch Carrie the other night, and she was really no. disturbed. Really? She's yeah, too it was young. too early. It was too yeah. early. Yeah. My my daughter my daughter came back my my thinking? daughter came back from a friend's house at twelve years old and said, "I saw The Exorcist last night. That is hilarious." <laughs> And I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> was like, that is hilarious. I remember it being really dark times shooting on this stage at the. Uh, this was Sony. the uh, the it's great. The, no, the, the, was it at Sony? It was at the uh, the the giant. Yeah, uh, the Spruce Goose. Spruce Goose. Oh, the Spruce, Spruce Goose. Goose. That's right. Yeah, we were inside the Spruce Goose. And because right, it was so big. And so, that was the salad bowl that I uh, demanded that I should have. And just pouring the rain on lunch. you guys for days and days. It's hard. And it gets depressing and it's hard. Yeah, and the cold. And, and the techno crane kept breaking down. <laughs> yeah. What was that little move? Can we just <laughs> rewind that for a second? What the hell was that? Your tongue got out of control the there. Thing there. <laughs> so there was a whole sequence here where you were on a horse. And you, it was the uh, medieval uh, times callback. Yeah, and you came after him, and you leaped right. on him, and you pretended to be a headless horseman, and then you tried to drill oh him in the face. Oh, my gosh, I forgot face. about Do we have that? We have that. We have that footage. you got to put that on there. That's, That's what I mean. All that stuff is so... Oh, my and God, you tried to I kill forgot him about the, the headless horseman yeah. <laughs> footage. And lately, my son's been obsessed with the headless horseman. I saw this the other and you day. Felt I was bad like, oh. cut it. You know what my daughter got really scared at, though? She got scared about 2001. And yeah. that's like a generational mm. thing. She got scared that the computers were going to take over. Well, they did. That terrified her. They did. They really did. Now we're all just this idiots is, waiting for the next piece of software, lining up like lemmings. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sequence we cut out of this was when you pull him under the water. Yeah. And he disappears, and then your nose pops up like Jaws. Uh-huh. Right. Which didn't quite ever work. Wow, you remember anything. everything. Yeah. What about when he rose out of the water, holding him over his head? Yeah. Is that it? That was the trailer we had, remember? No, that's that, not in. No, that's not in. Remember we had that as a trailer? Remember we tested yeah. the trailer in Burbank or something? Right. They didn't like that one, yeah. the scary yeah. one. Oh, I like he actually joke. broke my eardrums there on that shot. There oh. you go. That was good. Good sound effect there. Steven! His lisp disappeared. Steven? <laughs> Steven! <laughs> Steven. Steven! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's back. And it's back. Because that's what happens. It's like amnesia. <laughs> now, how emotional do you guys get now when a movie does well or, or, or badly? Like, a after having made a lot of movies, how emotionally connected are you? That's the... Uh, that's the question. Uh, That's my entire self-worth is wrapped up in it. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. I, I find it hard to totally disconnect from that stuff, you know, just on the basic level of, you know, human sort of, do I they want right to go see it or not? They hate me personally, and I have to win them back. I do, too. Because when it happens to me, no one sees my face. No, it's odd, because some of them, some of them, you just, you know, when they don't work, you know it was actually because the movie had something, you know, of gravity in it. <laughs> there was something that was not going to appeal to everybody and that it actually, you know, uh, spirited people away in the other direction who, who don't want to think or whatever. I mean, it's a complicated thing, though, because it is, hard, you know, how do you disconnect from that but also kind of not make it about yourself, yeah. too? Whenever you're like, whenever you try to do something serious, too, it's like you're, you're just going to lose people, you know, certain yeah. people. Because they want you to be a certain thing. There is a the thing with is. yeah with comedy where people take it very personally if you're not there to yeah. be funny for yeah. them. Yeah, just on yeah. just on Twitter, man. Every it's, once in a while, yeah. every every like every fiftieth person is like, "Who do you think you are? You better not be yeah. dramatic anymore." I, I get. Don't like, you be dramatic? I'll tweet something about Haiti, and then there'll be someone like, "Be funny." 
Yeah, what Make the hell? Why Who don't you just be funny, damn it? Put your penis in your zipper and shut up. <laughs> I'm unfollowing you. You're not funny. You just care about Haiti. <laughs> I get that I for retweeting your Haiti like... things. <laughs> Stop retweeting Ben's Haiti things. <laughs> Who do you think you are, funny man? I wonder if it's the other way around, though, when dramatic actors... Oh, I blew this one. I blew this scene. Why, really? No, I totally blew it. Look at me. Ugh. Oh, please. Oh, I don't I... believe that for a second. It's a complicated idea. He's talking to the, the ghost of his mother. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I this dropped was, it. Was, I dropped the ball. You, it's no, I dropped the, the ball. <laughs> is what I did. I, I let you down as a director, is oh. what I did. Well, okay. I remember we had two air, two helicopters, and one was photographing the other helicopter. That was real. And they got too close to each other, and we got really freaked out. Yeah, Do you yeah, remember yeah. that? Yeah, this was all like yeah, you know before course. computers. You had to actually get a freaking helicopter yeah. to shoot another helicopter. <laughs> yeah. And it was windy, and then we had to have the guy jump off the tower. And I well, thought that that was a guy named it's a, a stuntman named Bob Brown, and it was one of the most stressful nights of yeah. my life. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy's going to do a hundred and something oh. foot drop. For a joke. For a joke. For a joke. And it's it gets very real there when you go, okay, just yeah. I have never okay. written anything dangerous again. It's a really big responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, I don't I don't think I do insanely dangerous things in my movies, but you know, on every movie there's a moment where you go, Oh, this is potentially life threatening. Yeah. I mean, and they're right. just experimenting. They're just coming in going like, Oh, we've never tried this before. Yeah. Sure it'll work. <laughs> sure it'll work. You know? It's, it's amazing how I many saw, risks once, are taken. I once saw like a pyro guy like get his crotch lit, lit on fire and he's and setting a fire and he's like ah it's okay it's okay. <laughs> oh, that was on the Stiller show. Yeah, <laughs> during, the, during the medieval cop sketch. Remember, he said no big deal. It's okay. No big deal. This still was, got uh, one ball. I got one ball. Yeah. Sorry, we can't say that, can we? This was the meaning. This was, there was some it was an anti-media uh, television message, and look, it's only gotten worse in the world. Exactly. No one listened. That's what's interesting about this movie. I mean, it really is actually saying some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> do you, with Judd, just to complete the thought, how do you feel about when your movies come out, and do you get connected with that? Oh, outcome? I have those moments where I'm looking for some insight. Where, here. like, when I'm like so proud of something and it doesn't do well, like this, right. this blew my mind for like a. a I didn't you've never failed. You've I, never failed. I didn't recover like you guys. This really like threw me for years because mm -hmm. I loved it so deeply, so much. I truly felt out of connection with the audience. Like, how come? Like I love this work so much and what Jim's doing so much, what Ben did so much. Right. And then when it didn't do well, it really threw me because I thought I was really You're a freak. in tune. You're right. just a freak with from the audience liked. world. Right. See, I've never felt belong. I've never felt like I had any idea what the audience liked at all. So it's always like a crapshoot, really. Really? Yeah. I mean when you talk about you know what you like, right? And you do what feels good to you. I know, only what I like. Right. Only what how I can like. you how can you figure out what like you know, twenty million people are gonna like? What's or the not? Emerson thing, you know? What's that? <laughs> I remember he said um, something cool about did. that. I mean, I really, literally. No, kind of uh, what is true for all, uh, one man is uh, true for all. And, uh, Kyle uh, Gass, by the way. You know. Kyle Gass. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. I went back to television after this. Right. I, 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 I mean, I retreated back. You were nineteen. <laughs> I was fourteen years <laughs> old. <laughs> I didn't direct again for four about? years after this. It's truly incredible, though. I, I still marvel at where everybody went. It just blows me away. I, it's, it's hard for me to even be in the room with you guys. You freak me out completely <laughs> with your incredible success. That was a reshoot. Andy Dick. It's unbelievable. <laughs> But you gave us a you gave us a shot. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. When that's what, that's the, what it was. Honestly, though, Jim, just to put it in context, at the time when we did this movie, you were, right? I mean, you were. We were both like, you gave me. A, he didn't. He, wasn't he giving you a shot, and you were giving me a shot? Yeah, we. All, I know, but see, we've all been you interwoven and weird, show and, weirdly right. interwoven. Though. But Jud, you were taking. Judd was like pumping me when I was in the clubs and stuff, and then nobody, but, no one was watching me. But for and you, he was going like Jimmy. Seriously, he drives everyone out of the club. You yeah. got to see it. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> it's like, no, I've never seen anything like it, man. No one stays. They all leave. <laughs> I remember going to your young comedian special in uh, Phoenix with David That's Spade right. and Jim Judley opened for me on the road. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And then I thought, I got to quit. Amazing. I can't do that. So what did you think, Jim, <laughs> on on Cable Guy though? When you said when you, when you said to everybody, I want Judd to produce it, and then Judd said, I want Ben to direct it. And, Everybody was okay. We're gonna go with you. Go yeah. With you. yeah. Well, you know, this is the thing. I you don't had the know. Power I guess to be, do that. because it, and because it's comedy too. No one really knows anything about comedy. 
I mean, we kind of know a little bit about what we're doing, but but as far as the within the industry, the exact kind of branch, it's like right. they don't know how it happens. It's like they they just kind of you know, and it never comes to you prepared and ready to go. You always have to work it to death till the last second, you know, and play in the moment and whatever. And uh, I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say right now. No, you're saying they Can don't know, me? so they just take your. They'll yeah. go with your instinct. Exactly. Well, exactly. And I. And so what's and happened the along power, the way is if you're the guy in the power position yeah. there, then they'll Plus, listen to you. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of the comedies, a lot of a lot of stuff, and even in the not so comedies. Well, I mean, I love you, Philip Morris, first time directors, you know, but great writers, you know, but you know, you find yourself kind of having to take shots with people. You know, because they have that, you know, they, they might not have a lot of experience, but they have that kernel of, like, brilliance that you go, like, well, a good brain's a good brain, man. Let's go, you know? And they don't and, know uh, they don't know not to be scared. Like, when we did this, we yeah. didn't know not to be scared. Yeah. We didn't know that, in a lot of ways, the industry's saying, don't do this. Yeah. And that's what makes it pure, because when you yeah. watch it, it really is like a pure comedic thought. Right. You know, other than us trimming a couple of things without any interference. Yeah, it's not somebody trying to fit into a shape or a form that's known to be successful. And I don't think we knew enough about the context of the business, quote unquote, to know whether or not it would. So no, it could hurt us. Have, but Judd knew that that scene was going to cause a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Bo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dave. Well, you need uh, insane people with uh, weird balls to to do things. I look like like Ben Cross there. <laughs> Let's get the Chariots of Fire music going. Is it Ben Cross? He was ben the Cross Chariots, of, Chariots Fire, of Fire, yeah. right? And I, I remember more like Yoda or something, <laughs> like a little. One of the great moments was going into the studio with Jerry Cantrell when he recorded the closing oh, theme song and getting yeah, to man. watch him do it. I it was wow, the best. Wow, so cool. Yeah, you guys are so cool. I'm just glad to remember we. We had a cool helicopter oh, shot. Pretty fast with the away. credits, though, right? I mean, just like we're scrolling by pretty quickly. You almost can't notice. <laughs> also, a 13-week <laughs> post, by the way. Very short post. Yeah. Two tests and out. And when we when we went there, like, we didn't know what the audience would think. And so we had this bad test, and then you have to fly back on the jet with all right. the executives who are really depressed. You know, because it's their job. <laughs> it was, it was, it was we too, it was too bad that my money got in the way of all the fun. <laughs> you know, but, but, you know, I'm not going to look back with regrets. I'm just not. Well, it's a two, two just sided not. coin because you're, you also were the reason why it got made, too. So. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was such a fun movie. <sighs> we really had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. I, it really was fun all the way through. It really was. It, it was, was a great experience, I and I can't was. believe that the three of us seriously can't find the time nowadays <laughs> to come together and do something creative. Seriously, we've all priced ourselves out of the business. <laughs> you got, seriously, you guys got huge k kingdoms mm. almost. I can't even get inside. <laughs> Call I'll work assistant. for free. I'll say right calls. now. I'll Call get my going. assistant, okay? She'll <laughs> yeah. hook it up, all right? all right? Call my assistant's assistant. We really should do something. Seriously, because this is not enough. It's not enough. Well, I think we just cut our teeth on this. Well, that's a, it's fun now that we know more. <sighs> No, but do you think now, we're scared now or not scared? I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Are you scared? I, like, I just, I just scared? I've gone through fear now, and I feel like fear is, is part of the experience, but it's beyond fear now. I paid off my house. I'm okay. You are. You can live forever. Let's have Eckhart Tolle on the set to make sure we're not wow. scared. Oh, I love the that whole idea. time. The I'm whole not shoot. even kidding you. I bet I, I could convince that. him. I bet I could talk him into being in the movie. Really? To being a major part of, in the movie. Oh, God. As long as he didn't like have to remember lines and he could just stay in the now. Just stay in the moment. Because <laughs> remembering lines, like actually, actually memorizing lines, is nothing. He's completely against his. He probably has some justification for not remembering his lines. Yeah. Because they exist exactly. in the past or the present, totally. or the, the future, <laughs> or the but not future. the present. Or he's like, he's like, hey, so what we're after here is, and he's like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry. What you're after is not my concern. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Now. Thank you for watching. Oh, are we supposed to say goodbye now? I think it's going to end it's in about good. a minute. I'm glad we finally did this. We've been wanting to do this for about 10, ten years. years oh, right? yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I've never done this before. How'd we do, by the way? Did we do okay? We can come back and do it again. Uh, we're going to do it again with Corbin Burnson next Let's week. Let's start it over. Let's do one more take. Let's start it over, and I'll be you this time, Judd. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just got a lot more hair on your back. <laughs> ah, silver chair. What a silver chair. Yeah. yeah. American woman. Yep. Randy Bachman. Bach the great Bo Randy Bachman. The great Curtis Mayfield. Pusher Man. Pusher man.
<laughs> Satellite of Love. How's that go? Yes. Remember Mike McCready from go? Pearl How's Jam? Oh, we can't sing them. Yeah. Doing, doing yes. Satellite of Love? That's right. The last assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the sound of that. The last assassin. That's a way of cursing without cursing. And then we put to this... say the word assassin. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, this is a PG movie, but it's about assassins. Uh, and I always love this little piece of a song by <laughs> Cracker. You gotta hey, end. I got this uh, G-rated movie where I play an assassin. It's There's no violence in it, but I play an assassin. I'm sorry, am I beating that to death now? People poo-pooed it, but... <laughs> I'll see you at the next commentary when we do all it right. again. When can yeah. we do it again? When we're all 70. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we should have done that. I don't remember. <laughs> it's like the you know, little big man. I remember the battle. <laughs>